Joining us now is Professor Elizabeth Henning, Integrated Studies Foundation Chair at the University of Johannesburg. A very good afternoon to you, Prof. Thanks very much um, for your time. I want to start with what I think, certainly as far as many ordinary South Africans, this doesn't seem to be the case with our leaders, um, is a matter of primary concern. In fact, an issue that has reached crisis uh, I mean, uh, uh, levels, given just the number of uh, children who have died and who are falling sick virtually um, every day. But I do not get any sense of urgency from national leaders like the Minister of Basic Education, provincial leaders like the acting premier yesterday, um, or the chair of chairs at municipal level at the Johannesburg uh, um, city. I do not get a sense that these people are treating this matter with the agency that it deserves. You want me to talk about the urgency of this matter? Yes. It's extremely urgent, of course. And it is, it is disturbing that not more is made of it. <clears throat> but I also want to add for you, <clears throat> excuse me, that... This is something that has to be brought into the early school curriculum. Kids learn about pesticides, but they are not warned of where these pesticides can reside in food. And so it's very hard for children when they have a few cents in their pocket and there's a spouse outside the school and they go and buy something to eat because they are hungry. And I think this is, this is something that the whole society should take seriously. Parents, if at all possible, I know, I know it's hard. I know that many, many South Africans find it really hard to put food on the table. But I think if at all possible, kids should have something in their school bag so that they don't have to go to these shops. And another thing, if I were a parent now of a young child, I wouldn't give them pocket money to, to buy. Um, but I think it has to be addressed by all the teachers, by the SGBs, by the parent committees, and take the responsibility away from the law enforcing agencies, <laughs> but take it right to the heart of where children live and learn at home and in school. Now, of course, I mean, we're human beings and we have to accept that uh, crises or disasters do in fact um, um, happen but uh, what appears to be missing is what then mm. our leaders get to do in such situations in other words move in speedily and decisively and try to at the very least uh, uh, um, uh, try and uh, uh, sort of yeah. address the problem or at least, you know, um, find some way, you know, of putting brakes uh, and not allow the situation to, to get out of hand. That's true. It is possible. And I think it will happen because people like you are bringing it out into the open. And because the minister, what will be at, addressed it in, in her press talk today. And earlier on, not now during this recent crisis, it also became a topic many years ago. How can one ensure that when children buy food, that it is real food? Not even, you know, not even as bad as it is now, but that it is real food, that it is nutritious, that it will help them. I think there's a lot of education to be done here at all levels, at community level, in schools. And they should, I, I think there should be definitive legislation about this if there isn't already. I didn't check that. Well, I'm asking this also because, remember, we have a reference point here. We have COVID. You saw how... Um, uh, people, yeah. or the government in particular, moved mountains, you know, to install the yeah. kind of regime they thought was best 
um, for the challenge, the disaster we were confronted with um, at the time. I, I, I just don't think um, that uh, mm -hmm. they are acting with the kind of uh, skill, I mean, speed, leadership, uh, but also they are applying their minds to this problem. I don't know how many children have to die um, before that happens, if it will ever happen at all. But I want us to move on to the NSC exams. The minister telling us that all is well, everything in place, with the exception, of course, of a few minor and not so notable um, incidents. But this has always been um, the story, except perhaps mm -hmm. um, in a few, it, in, in, in some years where there, there have been leaks, you know, of exam papers and the like. But generally speaking, this has been the state of affairs over the years, isn't it? Well, the things that happen during uh, such an important exam at some exam centers where there are many personal issues playing out as well, like the one that I don't even want to talk about at the moment that happened in one school, uh, you know, that, that is the time when emotions run high, when not only the people at school who are writing the final exams, but their friends, their family, their communities are all a little bit, how shall I put it, a little bit hyped up. And so, so it's seen as an opportunity to, to act out a frustration. And maybe the frustration, you know, I'm not a psychoanalyst, but maybe the frustration lies very deeply um, within our society a frustration with something. But I was very pleased to see that 800,000 young people are writing the exam. But if I may put in my own little uh, footnote, I was just wondering about how many of the people who started off in grade one with these learners, how many of them remained in the system? Uh, in many previous years, we could see that what started off in grade one didn't end in grade 12 for many people. And that is something that always haunts me. You still, of course, have some of those uh, societal uh, problems or incidents that can actually be prevented if everyone is really committed mm. yes. um, to the examinations yes. and the futures of our children, where you still have incidents of uh, protest actions, as was the case, we were told yes. today, in Limpopo. You still have yes. uh, taxi strikes, uh, which is what happened in Yan Kemdor. Yes. And you wonder how yeah. on earth such incidents are allowed to happen, certainly at a time when the focus should be on ensuring that our children do actually write their uh, uh, examinations without any disturbances. Well, who knows why a taxi organization in Northwest Jan Kempdorp, <laughs> what motivates them? I, I, I think sometimes when there are these bursts of energy uh, in an unexpected way and then affecting the people who are writing the exams, are, are of an origin that, that can't be benign. There, there is something malicious in some of these things happening. Um, I don't want to speculate about what it can be, but um, it is disturbing. And I think, I think school governing bodies and all people who are interested in their schools or in their community's school, th that they should almost guard this time of year. Um, you know, many years ago, there was an instance of a school, I think it was in the Free State somewhere, where the parents actually patrolled the area and were on site to, to give help. Yes, um, I mean, look, Vuyo, we are not a society at ease. And I am very happy about the current Minister of Education. I, uh, in preparation for our discussion, I actually watched a whole range of um, the DBV, DBE's video channel and, and realized that, you know, there, there's movement. But I think, I think we need not only top-down movement, but a whole lot of bottom-up movement. 
And I think we are neglecting the people who are writing matric if we allow taxi organizations to strike or if we allow protests to happen where kids move in to go and write an exam. Of course, the minister also told us today that um, uh, from the distribution of exam papers to the management of security and uh, supervision, each phase of the exam uh, process is being taken care of. Of course, we know the background to this. Uh, we know how many places around the country uh, with, of course, KZN having the highest number of uh, sort of ragged, flagged mm -hmm. um, places where there's always uh, that problem that um, everyone has to watch for, which is um, a, a leaks of uh, exam papers. Mm -hmm. Look, that's a difficult thing to control in some way because if there is only one weak link in the system, only one small weak link, the, the, <laughs> the effect is huge. And uh, we are working with human beings and we are working with human beings who are also under stress at this time. And so uh, I would hope and believe that there won't be any leaks until the end of the exam. And I do hope that after the exam, <sighs> that there are no leaks exposed. I really hope so. We need hope in our education system. We need light, we need movement. And one of the videos that I watched that I mentioned was when, <laughs> when Ms. Kwarube actually made mention of the fact that matric as we used to say a lot at UJ, begins in grade one. Mm -hmm. It's a systemic thing. So we have to really invest, I would say, whatever we can in those early years. Hopefully someone is listening, Prof. Let me thank you for your time. Professor Elizabeth Henning from the Integrated Studies Foundation at the University of Johannesburg. Let's recap your headlines at this hour. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. Well, leaders are congratulating Donald Trump after his resounding victory over Kamala Harris in the U.S. presidential elections. Family and friends of 10-year-old Lisaidi Mulaudi are attending a memorial service in Alexandra today for the victim of suspected food poisoning. At the same time, Basic Education Minister Sibiwa Kwakuga says her department is working with the Department of Health to improve food safety in schools. Still to come, the Border Management Authority has temporarily closed the Libombo port of entry in Mozambique. We have that story and more. That's when we return in a moment. <laughs>